Welcome back to wagertalk.com. Sunday NFL playoff action. We've got the Detroit Lions heading down to play the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys are back in the playoffs, Brian. And I got to ask you a question. Uh, I know you were uh, out of town last week. Did you get to see any of the Dallas game last week against Washington? They were absolutely blowing out Washington. And Garrett still has Romo, you know, and Murray in the game when they got nothing to play for, a huge lead. I'm like, you know, you deserve to get one of these guys hurt. When they went uh, to London and played Jacksonville, that was when they had the long flight, flight for Romo. He's having the back problems, and he played them anyway. You know, this is a big year for Dallas. I guess he's putting all of his eggs in one basket. Well, you, you need those eggs. You don't want to get them cracked before <laughs> the season's over. Uh, the question here is, you know, Detroit, they came off a big game last week uh, against Green Bay. Um, Green Bay got the job done at home. A uh, little controversy in that game with uh, Rodgers getting stepped on. Sue getting suspended, then winning the appeal back in the game. Um, the Lions... Can they go into Dallas and win and stop this running game? Because we're looking at, when you do things on paper, this is strength versus strength. We've got the best rushing team versus, you know, the best defense against the rush, which is going to give. And everybody's pointing to, well, Lacey had a big game against them last week. I've got my thoughts on that, but I want to hear what you have to say. You know how you were a kid and your bicycle tire would have a flat and you use that pump, you'd step on the pump? Mm -hmm. I think that's what Sue was doing. He saw him laid out on the ground right there. He was trying to pump him up. Pump. Yeah. I think if he could have got to his neck, he would have went, he would have went there, <laughs> but it uh, would have been a little more obvious. Yeah, it's, I, I don't think they should have reinstated him, but for what it's worth. Um, yeah, this Detroit defense fairly has been out for a long time. He's a major run stopper. I heard earlier in the week he was coming to practice, he was looking a little bit better. I don't know if he's going to play. If he does play, that would be huge, huge in this game because you know Dallas wants to run the football. And that's what Detroit does when Fairley's there. They're an excellent run defense. But you've got a Detroit team here. Overall, is very healthy compared to earlier in the season. Now, the offense has struggled as of late, but they've got a lot of the big players on offense that are back. They're healthy. Uh, defense, if they can get Fairley back, that would be huge. But, you know, you, you look at, uh, we talked about this in, a, in the previous video, teams with a stronger schedule, all being the underdogs on these games, a mm -hmm. little bit stronger schedule for Detroit. Dallas has a history of not having a very good home field advantage here. Um, and if you take a look at defenses, if you can catch a touchdown with a team with a better defense, that's usually the way to go. And that's Detroit here. And I know you did, you, you did the uh, Megapod with Gail Alexander. He talked about how teams in this round win more often and cover. So basically you pick the winner and you're right. going to cover more in this round. But I think there's some live dogs here. And it would not surprise me if any of these four, four favorites go down, even the majority, because they all have flaws. And we know what Dallas's flaw is. It's that defense. It is. And people are looking at they're going to be able to run the football like Green Bay was last week. There's a little bit of a difference. Green Bay, Lacey is a power running back. You know, he's a bruising running back. And they were playing outdoors in Lambeau in late December. It's cold. This is an indoor team. I'm sorry, when you're facing a bruising running back, and I'll go back to my Steeler days, when Jerome Bettis was running the football, he got better later in the game because when you're playing in the cold weather in Pittsburgh and you got a bruising back that is going to, you know, not look to go around you but over you, you feel those hits, and as the game wears on, you want less and less to want to make those tackles on those kind of guys, and that's why running plays that might have only been two yards or three yards in the first half in the fourth quarter suddenly become four and five yard carries because the guys are just not bringing them down, and I think that was the case last week with Lacey against this Detroit defense. You look back at everybody else that they faced, they've shut down all of the running games that they faced, and we know that the success Dallas has had is because they run, ran the football more this year and took the you know the burden off of Romo. When Romo has to make plays, that's when bad things happen. Yeah, Romo's been a very good quarterback, and in my eyes, a little bit underrated in the past because he does tend to blow the game when it's, it's you know the Andy Dalton type of thing. 
but he's a very good quarterback. But if they can't run the football, he's not having this type of year. And they've been able to run the football. But to get back to what you were saying about the bruising running back, I mean, there's going to be two weeks in a row that Detroit's going against a real bruiser on the uh, other side here. So uh, if Detroit does get past this game, after playing those back-to-back -back bruising running backs maybe next week is is a good time to go against them, but we won't get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, the only bad thing that, you know, we got to bring it up, you know, the Lions on the road with Stafford against a winning team. You know, we talk about how bad Andy Dalton, you know, has been in big games. Stafford just doesn't win these games. That's the only bad thing about the Lions in this one. In that stat that Gil did bring out in the podcast about pick the winner, that's who, you know, is going to cover the spread. You know, history says that it's not going to be a three-point game. And, you know, if you're taking the dog, we're looking for it. We're looking here for them to win the game outright. Uh, if that stat holds true, can he break that jinx? Well, you're looking at all these, as I said, all these teams have weaknesses. And there's a reason why they don't have a bye. So anytime an underdog wins, obviously the underdog's going to cover. Um, so I think that adds to the higher rating there for uh, teams winning and covering. But uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's, you're going to hold your nose if you're playing any of these teams. They can all collapse. We've seen it all season long. There's certain games that they just didn't play well. I think out of, the, out of all the teams playing on this round, maybe Dallas is the most complete team. But boy, that defense scares me. If, if they can't play ball control, that defense will be on the field more, and that's where. But wish they wish the Lions. You know what happened to this Lion offense? The, the, this is the biggest mystery because they've got so much talent on offense. I don't know why they're not scoring. I mean, you think back, you know, last couple of years, the problem with them was never the offense. Right. It was like, you know, they had defensive players, but they were always underachieving under Schwartz, and you'd have those games where they'd score 30 points and not cover. This year, they can't get to that 30-point mark. Yeah, they've been very conservative offensively, and uh, and a lot of it, as we pointed out uh, earlier, were injuries. I mean, when you've got Megatron, who could be the best receiver in the NFL, if he's struggling and, and he doesn't draw that double teams because the other team knows he's just a decoy, that's going to hurt the passing game. So now that a lot of people are back, we'll see how Detroit goes here. All right, there it is. Brian says to take the Lions plus the points. Hey, I want to tell you guys we're offering something new at Wager Talk. It's only going to be on Wednesdays and Saturdays right now. It is the Wager Talk One Day Power Pass. And what that is, and we know that basketball season Wednesday is the biggest weekday card of college basketball and usually a full NBA slate. And then on Saturday, of course, you've got everybody playing. We'll have football, we'll have basketball, you know, you could have uh, 100 college basketball games on a Saturday. With the one-day power pass, $99, you can get every capper on the site, all their plays that day, one price. Check it out, the Wager Talk one-day power pass. And don't forget, every Tuesday, you can check out one capper. We feature one capper. Give his best bet for $2 on, on $2 Tuesdays. Check that out each and every Tuesday. All right, that's it for this week's playoff games. Uh, we'll be back next week previewing the, the next round. We'll see how the wild card weekend goes, and we'll probably be talking a little bit next week about the actual national championship game. Uh, as far as a pick goes, we'll check it out next week here on wagertalk.com.